for real. And can we all see that? Dan, is that all right? Yeah, that's working fine, Liz. Well, OK, I'll get us started. So uh, first thing that I wanted to address was um, it was really great to see uh, people sending in their examples of what I asked us to do at the end of the last session, which was create a post for your club advertising something. Um, and I think from the examples I've seen, uh, everybody took on board everything that was said during the last session, which is really great to see. So we're just going to quickly go over some examples of what I was sent um, and look at some good things that were done and then maybe some things that could be improved upon. So the first one, um, this was sent in uh, by someone from VC Newport, I guess. Um, if if anyone would like to shout out what they think uh, some positives are from this, that would be great. Just uh, unmute yourself and just shout it out. I can't really shout anything can't out, shout anything out sir. Lewis, because it came from me. OK. <laughs> Well, OK, if I can put that to you then. So uh, what what made you go with this sort of design then in terms of, you know, the background, the colours um, and the logo placement? OK, so first of all, okay, so first of all I was trying to use colours that um, were picked up in the VC Newport logo. Yep. Yep, no, that's secondly, great. I was Sorry, go on. Uh, secondly, I wanted to make it as simple as possible and not put too many words onto the screen. Just keep a really clear message. Yeah, no, that's great. So um, that's definitely one of the, the, the good things about this is that it's a nice, clear image. You can clearly see um, the information that's conveyed across. So if we just go through this, so yeah, we've got a clear title on the white cloud, so it's good use of the background there. So you can see the black writing on the white clouds uh, makes the title stand out and um, definitely catches the eye. Secondly, we've got the incorporation there of the brand, which is what I talked about in the last session. So um, as you mentioned, we've got the, the colours of the, the logo in there, the red and the yellow, and that's incorporated in the text, uh, which is really great to see. And by doing so, you're building that brand image and getting those colours associated with the club. Uh, the next point, uh, the badge is clear um, and the purpose of the image is also conveyed. So, you know, you've got the information on there. It's, a, it's about a virtual club rides every Sunday in January. It's nice, clear, uh, presented in a good fashion. Um, and so if I was just to make some notes on this, uh, the first thing I would say is that you could make the text stand out even further by adjusting the background brightness and contrast um, so I'll be showing you that uh, quickly after we go through a couple more examples it's a really easy way to make a text stand out a bit more if you're going to use backgrounds like this uh, the next thing is the the logo placement so um, at the moment you can see the white border on there which in a way it does help uh, it does sort of draw your attention to the image but um Quite annoyingly, they've taken off a free feature, uh, which is where you can make an image have a transparent background. Um, so that's unfortunately not a free feature anymore. That's a, the paid for feature. However, I am able to uh, use that. So if, if you have a club logo that you would like to send to me and I can make that transparent for you to use on, a, on an image, then feel free to do so. Um, my email will be at the end of this presentation. Um, and it just gives it just gives it a bit more of a, a sleek look if, if you get rid of the, the white border on there. And then the last thing is that I, I completely agree that, you know, less text, the better. And it's nice and clear, although, you know, it might be worth maybe jotting down some times or, you know, if you are going to post um, post this image, including the text above uh, the more detailed information. But I yeah, I, it was a good, really good, good job. And the next, oh, sorry, the Swift logo. That was the other thing I was going to say. I assume that the virtual club ride would be done on Swift. Um, if so, uh, it might be worth including the logo on that because, again, that's going to catch people's attention. A lot of people now are familiar with the Swift logo, um, so it might make a good feature within this image. And the next okay, one. OK, thank you. Yeah. No problem. Uh, was this from yourself again? It was. It was my second attempt. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And so could you talk me through this one a bit? Uh, similar to the, 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 the first one, really. Again, I was trying to use the colours, but in a slightly different way. Obviously, at the top with the red, uh, yellow and the red again. Yeah. Um, I was trying to use the, um, the script against a clear white background. And also, I wanted VC News to put a little smaller in, in, in the um, uh, overall main picture there. So obviously, I've reduced the size of the club logo. Yeah. No, I think um, the, your idea to move the, the club logo down there, it actually fits really well. Um, it looks it's quite professional as well to have that in the corner. Um, so that really adds to the image. And also, uh, I like how you incorporate the brand of the club logo colours uh, in a different way. Um, so this is, you know, it's really good initiative really to to use such practices because when you are going to be putting out a fair few images uh, to try and, you know, attract people to your club or get people to get involved in events going on in your club, you want to obviously uh, diversify and mix things up a bit. So it's a really good use of the colours there. Okay, thanks. So yeah, clear title uh, and I love the incorporation of the brand colours. Um, and again, the, the image you've used is is very unique which uh, is great to see and it's eye catching. Um, you know, I'm sure people, a lot of people would stop in their, in their news food and want to, want to have a look at that image. And uh, as you said, when you sent this across, you know, there's, there's no copyright issues there because it's uh, an image that you've taken yourself. Um, so really good use of that. Uh, the, and the content does stand out. So, you know, I, I like how you've used the colors uh, on the background um, it, it's nice and clear and conveys the message nicely. Uh, just just some notes. Um, so you could have more information. So again, like I said, like the last one, um, if you are including that in the text above, then that's completely fine. Um, but it might be worth maybe just putting jotting down uh, the, the rough time if, if they are occurring at the same time every Sunday. Um, maybe just uh, noting in the time there underneath the the every Sunday in January. And the the next thing I'd suggest would maybe just be to drop the virtual club ride title down a little bit. Um, it's it's quite close to the top border. Um, so I'll also uh, after I'll jump into Canva and I'll show you quickly how to utilize the ruler tool. Um, it's similar to the purple borders that I was talking about, which snap into position. Um, but sometimes it's I would generally keep things sort of um, away from borders uh, in approximately in the same, you know, horizontal uh, vertical dimensions. Um, it just tends to give that more focus into the, the middle of the picture there and, and doesn't help because the eyes can tend to drift. And uh, we, we ran this workshop with uh, our young ambassadors and I tasked them with setting a, a Christmas card for their club. Um, so if anyone uh, wants to have a go at sort of, you know, looking at uh, what they find engaging or, you know, good about this image. We seem to have a quiet lot uh, today, Lewis, really. So, uh, well, first of all, it definitely conveys the message of Merry Christmas, doesn't it? So, you know, with the yes. marble hanging down um, yep. and, and the red ball and predominantly red writing and uh, red being the colour with the baubles as well. There's a yep. kind of unifying theme in terms of the colours and it clearly um, um, represents uh, a message that's saying have a nice Christmas. So, yeah, I think it looks pretty good to me. Yeah, no, I'd agree. It's uh, yeah, it's a clear message. Um, again, the, the colours there with the red. Uh, incorporating itself with the, the the ball on the logo is great. Um, one thing I would say, I think I forgot to write on my notes, would be the size of the image. So in the last session, we talked about the importance of image sizes. Um, so as you can see, this is clearly a uh, not a, a square picture. It's more of a rectangular picture, which posted on different platforms may uh, cause a bit of an issue in terms of how the images presented to someone scrolling through their newsfeed on their phone or on their computer. So it's you have to remember that the the most common most commonly used size for for images on social media nowadays is 1080 by 1080 pixels. Um, and, and if you use in that format, it's really a safe bet. And you're not going to have any issues with uh, how that image looks when you post that online. So yeah, 
uh, as you said, it's clear message and good use of the colours. Uh, it's a nice design. You've got uh, the baubles and also good use of elements. So if you remember that tab on the side of Canva, um, there was that element section where you could search. You can search snowflakes. You can search baubles, holly, if you were designing a Christmas card. Um, and that also really helps with you know uh, getting people to to view your content and catching people's eyes. And then again, yeah, nice use of the club logo incorporated within that sort of. I don't, I don't know if it's done on purpose or not, but it almost looks like a ball ball itself. Um, you know, I think maybe some string coming down off the top would have been uh, nice. So, yeah, careful when using grids. So, as you can see, um, it's part of the balls logo is cut out. And that's because, oh, sorry about that. That's because the, um, the person has used a, a grid which is already uploaded to Canva as a default template. And so, how you can fix that is. Um, you'd have to use the club logo itself and cut around it. So I'll show you again how to do that after. And the next thing I'd say is maybe uh, space out the text a little bit more. So it is quite close to the logo. So it's nice to have that uh, distinctive gap in between uh, any images or elements you have in text. And the next thing would be the club colors. So um, one thing I've noticed is that the red on the ball in the logo is quite a uh, a harsh thing to pick on, but it's you know it's this detail which is going to really uh, strengthen your engagement online. It's the the colours on the red. I know they match the baubles, um, but I think it would have been nice maybe to incorporate the club logo colours. So obviously you've got the, the red on the ball there. It's a bit of a stronger red. Uh, that there is a, an easy way to sort of copy a color from an image directly to the text you're you're writing or the element say you've you've uploaded such as the baubles so i'll show you how to do that on canva just after this i will show you now just get canva up and i'll share my screen for you and can we all see that Yeah, that's fine. Bro. OK, so the first thing that I wanted to quickly go through on Canva, which is what I showed you in the last session, uh, and for those who weren't there, uh, it's a completely free platform and it's really great for using, for designing small videos or, or images such as this. Uh, it's adjusting the background. So uh, I think we talked on the first image about how uh, perhaps adjusting the background would make the text stand out a bit better. So what you can do here is if you click on the background image here, brings up this menu along the top and you just want to hit adjust. And then this brings up a whole different uh, options, a whole, whole lot of options for you to edit the uh, different effects that you can apply to the image. So generally, if you've got an, an, an image background which is has a lot going on, um, if you're going to be putting text on that, I would tend to lower the brightness a bit just because if you see when I lower the, t the brightness, you can still make out the image, but at the same time it brings forward that text and makes it a lot stronger. Um, and you can also play around with the contrast. Um, so, you know, if you did want to definitely have the, the flag, say, as a standout point, you can sort of just drag that contrast down a bit, uh, which sort of grays the image. Um, but generally, you know, there's, there's no rule of thumb in terms of moving the brightness down or moving the contrast down. To every background, it's it's you know you just gotta have to play around with that. Um, but it's a really easy tool to use on Canva. You could play around with these ones down here, such as saturation. Uh, but again, you know it's personal preference whether you want that sort of warmth coming through or you know that sort of black and white uh, effect on there. Uh, so that's the adjusting backgrounds. I'll show you the border and ruler guides. So this is what I talked about before. How if I click on this text now and I can drag it over. You can see these purple lines appearing. Uh, and then there's also in the in the center, there's another purple line. So that tells you, you know, when you're when you're editing uh, text or if you've got an image uploaded roughly where it's going to be placed, you know, it's it's tend to it's good practice to follow these lines because they're they're uh, rough guides of, you know, where the image is going to be or the text. Another thing I, I'm not sure if I showed you last time, uh, if you click on uh, an image or text or an element, say a shape, and you click position here, these down here are line to page. These uh, allow you to basically snap it to, you know, you can snap it to the middle here or you can snap it to the top. 
Um, the only thing I would say about using top and bottom is that it literally puts it right at the top. Um, so just remember there the importance of sort of having that that guide. So you can see that purple grid there um, and it, it, it draws a rough border. Uh, that's sort of good practice there to, to remember that there should be a rough border. Any any important thing you're putting in there, be it text or an image, make sure it's roughly within that, that purple square. Um, if you wanted to uh, create your own borders, say, if you just go up to the top left hand corner here and you click file and you click show rulers. It brings up this option here, which is your own personal ruler. So what I can do here is I can drag this down and it will snap to the lines here. So say if you wanted that constantly showing, you just drag and let it go. And I'll do the same for the bottom, drag and let that go and the side as well. So I can drag here to the purple and it generally snaps to the purple when you're moving that across. Um, and now when I'm editing, I can see roughly where that border is. So I want to make sure that any important text or you know an image that I want to get in there needs to be roughly within those borders. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying you can't go outside the borders. Um, it's just generally good practice uh, and, and it's sort of an un unconscious thing that you you'll pick up on if uh, you're looking through feeds and whatnot. You'll, you'll see that people tend to generally put uh, things in the middle of this rough border. And then if you wanted to remove that to see what the image would look like, uh, you just hit file and you hit show rulers again and I'm oh, sorry, show guides and that will take them off. So uh, they, they won't save though. If you if you do decide to save the image and you've still got the rulers or the guides on, that's that's not an issue. And the last thing that I'll show you is utilizing the photo. So I talked about before how um, in the balls logo that it would be nice to use the same sh uh, the same shade of red. Um, on the logo as you do with the color. So this is an example I've taken with um, one of our commercial sponsors. Um, so their logo is predominantly using this blue color. Um, so what you can do is this is an image I've uploaded. So you upload the image and you put it on here. And then this image here, this is an element that I've got. Uh, so you can get any shapes and you can search for anything on the elements by clicking on here. What I can do is I can click on the color in the top left hand corner and then if I scroll down, you can see photo colors here. Um, so any any photo or, or upload you have per se and you drag onto the page, it will generally try and pick those colors up. Um, so then we can make that blue and then there we go. We have the same exactly the same shade of blue there on the, the cyclist image that I've got here. So it's a really handy thing to remember if especially you can, you can use it for text as well. So say if I wanted to you know, change that, I could click on the text color in the top bar here and then the document colors is the blue because of the image. Um, so that that would be the ex exact same uh, hue color as, as the picture there. So that's a really handy tool to use. So I will just switch back over to the presentation note. Sorry. And I'll hand over to Dan, who's going to be talking through uh, some video content. OK, cool. Um, yeah, the last workshop we sort of spoke about how, how you could incorporate different elements into sort of promoting your sort of club and videos and, and what was out there. And one of the one of the great sort of little tools that um, I've used myself a few times is, a, is an app called Relive. Um, it's a really good sort of program that basically pulls your your GPS sort of files, your route data, and creates a little Tour de France style flyover sort of video. So, Lewis, if you wouldn't mind just clicking the uh, the link on the on the screen there, we'll do a video, and the video explains it a lot better than I possibly could do. I'll just have to reshare my screen with the sound on. Um, that should be working now. Uh, let me know if you can't hear it, and I'll start again. Well, now you can. First thing you'll need to do is get your GPX file from your desktop Strava. Once logged in, you'll need to click on My Activities. Pick the one that you'd like to share with everyone. Today, I'm going to go with Wings for Life. On here, you'll need to press the three dots on the left-hand side and simply press Export GPX. 
this file will automatically download to my laptop. Let's head over to Relive and log in. If you haven't already set up an account, set one up. You'll need this on the laptop and download the app for your mobile. If it hasn't automatically brought you to settings, press settings in the top right hand corner. If you press trackers, you can see all the different trackers that connect to Relive. Strava was one, but no longer is. So this is why I'm showing you how to do it. From the list on the left, press import. Select the file to upload. Let's find the Wings for Life file. Click on that one. It'll take a few moments, but as soon as it's done, it will let you know. Now we need to head over to the mobile device. Open the Relive app and log in again. As you can see, I already have other maps, and that's because it's downloaded straight from my watch. But we're looking for the new one that we've just made, which is right here. Click on that one. Press create a relive video. Name it. What type of activity it is, so running. If you've got other people you know on Relive, you can add them to your timeline. If you have a subscription, there are special features. You can add music or videos. As you can see from my timeline, it already automatically added photos from my phone to the exact same time of when I took it at what distance. If you're not happy with any of the photos, you can press on the tick or take it off. If you want to change to a different photo, press add moment in the bottom right hand corner. If you scroll sideways on the yellow bit, you can change to where you'd like the picture to be. Then select location, press on the plus sign and look for the photo you'd like to add in place. When you're happy, click set location, press break and it will start making your video. If you really want to, you could always share your root card, which is basically this, and share it to any of these different platforms. But by the time we go back, the video should be ready for us to share as well. There we go, we now have a video which we can share with everyone. Let's go ahead and do that. Just as simple as this, I'm gonna go with Twitter today. There'll be a pre-programmed message, you can change it to however you like, and then go ahead and tweet it. Now everyone that clicks on your link will be able to have a look at your wonderful map you've just made. Can't wait to see all your different maps. Thanks for watching. Another day, another run. See you in the real world. So yeah, that's um, that's real life. What you can do. The, the, we had a couple of questions whilst that was coming in. Um, essentially, there is a free version. Um, we're going to show you. I'm going to just take control of the screen and show you a, a little Twitter video that was sort of made with it in a second. Um, but there is a premium one as well. So if you were, actually want to embed video instead of photos, then there is a paid for version which you can do that with. I don't think it's particularly expensive, but for for most of the things that I've done with it, then it works fine. You can make a video of, I think it's under, it's a, a minute and a half. So essentially that works really well for Twitter because Twitter is a, is a limit of sort of two minute videos anyway. So it's, uh, it does the job for that. Uh, Lewis, if you just wouldn't mind going back to the presentation for us. Just get up for you now. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so just to sort of summarize, what it does is it uses your, your GPS. So you can download the app on your phone and you can record it straight onto your phone as a, as a GPS device. Depends how far your ride is, of course. Um, or you can, as they did in the video there, upload it from their, from their device, their Garmin or whatever, um, and then pull the, the GPS file to, to put that into the program to, uh, to create the, uh, the video for you. So I'm just gonna, Take control of the screen here a second for the Lexus. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and hopefully you should be able to see a screen. He says. Uh, afraid it's not working for me, Lewis. I think my laptop's packed in. If you wouldn't mind um, clicking on the video link for us. Yep. Two sucks. 
to the Twitter. There we go. Yeah, if you just play the, the, the video for us that's uh, it's up on the shop. So this was essentially sort of made just uh, using the sort of GoPro uh, and then once I created the Relive video, just pulled that down uh, off of Relive, so, so downloaded it to my sort of uh, my iPad as it was in the end, uploaded the, the video from the GoPro as a, as a video in video, if you like, stuck the two together and, um, and you've got a little sort of flyby sort of video and give people a, uh, an idea of what, what the ride's like. Obviously, it's a very short ride. It was just just playing around with it. Um, but for us, it was quite good for from a beginner's point of view. If they wanted to have a look at that sort of trail and sort of have a ride onto it, it gives them an idea of what sort of surface they're riding on, how wide the road is, how busy it would be. This is all cycle path, so very quiet. But um, it's just one of the many sort of things you can do with that sort of app. OK, Lewis, that's great. Thank you. No problems. OK, um, I've got a couple of different things so that we sort of that I personally sort of use for sort of making videos. So I use a little app that's called InShots. You can download it for Android or Apple. Um, it allows you to do a lot of the stuff you can do with sort of Canva. So you can make images um, and you can make sort of videos as well and just pieces the whole thing together. You can upload straight into your social media accounts then as well. And there are different options where you can frame the different sides of it depending on what format you want to use. Um, the other one, if, you, if you've got an Apple device, you've, you've got a really decent bit of software built into most phones and, and iPads with the, um, with the iMovie. So if you recognize that sort of uh, that star uh, logo, have a play with it. There's really good. They do short sort of trailer videos or you can make a, a full blown uh, film if you wanted to um, as to what your club actually do. OK, Lewis, if you move on, please. Thanks. Um, Another thing we sort of spoke about last time is, was adding subtitles to these sort of videos. You know, a lot of people will watch the uh, watch your content uh, on their phone, perhaps when they're supposed to be doing something else rather than looking at social media. So uh, if you can add the subtitles on, that works really sort of well. If you've watched back the video that we did from this last month, you'll notice we uploaded the subtitles to that as well. Just it helps people uh, with different accents and stuff as well. It might not come across particularly clear, so the subtitles will sort of help with that. Um, so if you can click on the link again, Lewis, for us. Sure. Sorry, you're in and out of the, uh, the presentation today. It's all right. So what we've got here is is YouTube. It's essentially where we all upload our, our videos on the World Cycling website, and then we embed them from that into our website. Uh, you can also save down the uh, the videos and stuff once you've sort of made them. So what we tend to do is if we've got quite a short video, this one that we've got on screen is, a, is four minutes, so it's too long for most social media, um, but it would work fine for Facebook. So we downloaded this version of it and then we use that to upload straight to Facebook rather than putting in a link to another website, which the more links that people go through, the less likely they are to sort of read through it all. So what we can do is on the left hand side uh, underneath where you've got details, you can you can see the editor uh, button. If you just click on to that one. Uh, and then there's lots of sort of different options we've got in there. We could we could add in different sort of music uh, and we, we could trim it if we wanted to make the video even shorter. We're not going to do anything with this one because this one's live on the website. So <laughs> don't want to break this one. Um, underneath editor, a little bit further down is the subtitles option. So once you're on that, YouTube's quite good and it will have a go at doing the subtitles for you automatically. Um, you will get a few hilarious uh, incidents where it will misspell something for you, that's for sure, uh, and try and catch you out. What you can do is once it's already created and uploaded, you can click into the edit function and you can see how it is and you can you can make those sort of changes if you want to. With this video, being that it was quite long, four minutes, um, there are sorry, there are different ways that you can click into it and it will play the video and it's got the option where you can type in the changes as it sort of goes through and it will sync it together. Because this was quite a long video, I did a little life hack, uh, which is really sort of useful if you're doing these sort of videos. Essentially, if you play the video back on one device and use another one like your phone and you've got like the notepad function of your phone, put it really close to the speaker 
um, and it will do text to type essentially so it will translate all of that for you everything that's coming out through the video create it into a text file if you save that as an srt file and i'll put all of this in an email um following on when, when we upload this video for you with all the all the top tips once you've got that srt file that's great you can put that straight into facebook you can drop it into this youtube function and it will automatically pair it up with when somebody's saying those words you might just need to Few tiny little tweaks, um, but it will do most of the legwork for you. Otherwise, on a four minute video, you're looking at at least an hour's worth of editing time, typing it in and and checking it through. Um, so, yeah, it definitely saves a lot of time that way. Um, when you sorry, Lucy, if you can just go back to um, the, the editor function again for us. Yep. Uh, I lied. If you go back to the channel content, sorry, uh, up at the top above it, that's it. And then if you just uh, just click back onto the video again for us, uh, not the actual video, but the description next to it. Um, uh, and just the pencil edit side of it. That's it. So if we just scroll on right the way down to the bottom of that page for me. And then you can see underneath uh, there should be show more. Sorry, you click that one. And then you've got the tag sort of option. So if you just scroll up just one. There we go. So within the tags, I've put YT CC equals on. That's um, that's a little tube that forces the subtitles onto your sort of videos. So normally you would have the option in YouTube whether you want subtitles or not. If you add that code in, then every time that video appears, it will start with the subtitles and people have to turn it off if you don't want to see it. Really sort of useful if you're doing it on social media, something that people might forget to sort of click on it or they need to turn the volume up too much. If you do that, it works really well. So that's um, that's a good, useful little hack for you. OK, uh, I think that was it for that. If, uh, if anyone's got any sort of questions, we use YouTube because it's 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 a free free tool that you can use to create your sort of videos. It's catalogued somewhere. If you if you use a Chrome, so the Google browser, you can then download that video that you've made then as well, and you can use that for other sort of things. So it's a, it's a good place to be a video bank rather than filling up your your own laptop with hundreds of videos or anything. Okay, if we can go back to the presentation, please. Yep. Um, the other thing that we said about it was other sort of useful equipment that you might want to use. Um, so done it real sort of simple with images. So the top ones, we've got a GoPro or a cheaper models. There, there's plenty of different ones out there. Um, I use a couple of GoPro, uh, fake GoPros, if you like. Um, they're 20, 30 pounds, really sort of cheap. They work fine for really short little clips, really. So a couple of those on your on your club group rides and get different angles is always sort of useful. Uh, underneath it is a, the little lapel sort of mics that you sort of see on TV interviews and stuff like that. You can buy those. We use those for our interviews that we sort of make. Um, that it's a ten pounds from from Amazon. It's the ones that I've sort of got. They've got quite a ex long extension cord. What works really well with those with the GoPro is rather than connecting the GoPro to the lapel mic because you've got all sorts of issues then with the camera on one bike and somebody mics up on another. Um, essentially, put the microphone into your mobile phone, put it in your back pocket, put the record function on and you'll get the audio that way. And then with um, with the um, with the video sort of apps that we sort of said about with the iMovie, you can basically splice the audio and the video together so it will it will work fine. Then it will come across that you know, you've got a great GoPro camera that's got a microphone built into it as well. Uh, Another useful piece of equipment to have is is the um, is the phone stand. Uh, they call them sort of gorilla pods, essentially gorilla sort of stands. They're great. They're basically flexible feet that you can attach your device to it, whether it's a GoPro, a camera, your camera phone, and you can bend the legs on them to sort of wrap them around anything. Um, videos are great to sort of make, but you either need somebody with really sort of stable hands or a tripod, which obviously isn't going to be useful whilst you're out on a bike lugging a big tri tripod around. But these things are great, so you can set it up and you can take a step back from it. There's nothing worse than having a video of it bouncing around like somebody's trying to film whilst they're sitting on a trampoline. 
So uh, uh, the stands, again, I've, I've seen them in supermarkets for about five pounds. And I, I did have a look this morning uh, just to, to make sure they're still around. When you can get to Argos, they're uh, they're on sale for there for 10 to 15 pounds as well. So relatively cheap equipment, all really sort of small, compact, fits in your back pocket, makes it dead easy to sort of pull out whilst you're on a ride uh, to make a to capture some little bits of footage that you can make into a video to promote your club even further. OK, uh, next slide, please. So um, what what we do um, with a lot of our social media, um, this might might not come to a huge surprise to you, but um, when you see the post that goes out at six o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock at night, it, it's not myself or Lewis. Um, been in, been in the candle at both ends trying to sort of stay up and remember to post something out at a set time. Those posts we rely on sort of uh, auto auto scheduling sort of programs and we use a program called Hootsuite which again is a free program that you can use. It's um, there is a paid version so you can you can um, have even more sort of content going on it but a free version for a club works absolutely fine. The free version allows you to schedule 30 things um, and you can schedule it across all of your different platforms. We use it a lot of the time to see how posters are sort of performing and also respond to the different ones that sort of come in. So it will give us a dashboard essentially of all the different our social media channels and a live time of what's going on with them. So rather than having to remember to sort of go on to Twitter in the morning and then go onto Facebook, we can just go onto the one website and it pulls all that information together for us. They're really good, like I say, in terms of sort of scheduling sort of posts. Um, you can see roughly when your audience are most likely to sort of engage with you. For most people, it's it's normally in the evenings uh, when you're at home and something's on TV and you're you're joining in the conversation that way. Um, so you can schedule those posts if you you know you know that they have to go at a set time, um, and yeah, it just takes a lot of stress out of your life. We will when we send this presentation to you, we'll put in a couple of screenshots of our our Hootsuite sort of page to give you an idea of what it looks like. But you can you can create whatever you want using the Canva and your images, put that in, type the the social media post that you want, schedule it for when you want it to go out. So we have got things scheduled into our system for months in advance. Um, and um, and it it does it for you then essentially. Um. <clears throat> If uh, do you want me to just go through some final tips then, Dan, for, for social media? Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. Sure. So um, I'll just uh, I'll just end the presentation then just with some some final tips to take away. So uh, the first one would be uh, the importance of social media insights. So uh, these can really determine when you post and what you post. Uh, and then also, as Dan mentioned, sort of they can really determine when your audience is most online. So when people are more likely to see something that you're putting out. So I'll just quickly take you through uh, how you can do that on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Twitter is a bit more difficult to determine the time that the, your audience is online most active. So I'll take you through Facebook. So what you want to do on Facebook is you head over to your page. And if you're an admin of your page, you should have this bar pop up on the left hand side. Uh, and allows you to do lots of different things with your page. But for our purpose, we want to be heading over to Insights. So once you've clicked on Insights, it will take you over to this page and it will give you uh, a summary, as it were, of all of your page, all of your posts gone up, how they have performed in the last seven days. You can change time to the last 30 days or the year. Uh, however, if we want to see when our audience is most online, uh, we want to head over to the left hand side again on the bar and just click on Posts. And once you've clicked on posts, it will bring up this tab here of when your fans are online most. And that's really handy in determining, as I said, when you're posting your content, because, you know, you don't want to be putting important information out there uh, or engaging in engaging content out there when nobody's going to see it. Right. So if you, you head over to your page, click onto the insights and posts, it will give you a, a graph there of when your audience is most online uh, and that's really handy in informing your, your content moving forward. And then for Instagram, um, annoyingly, you can only view the insights for Instagram on the actual app itself. So what you want to do is head over to your your page if you're on Instagram and you click on the insights button there underneath the edit profile. 
and it will bring you all of your insights then on uh, the last seven days. Instagram doesn't go very far back, I believe, in insights, so it's a good thing to, good practice to regularly check Instagram, unlike Facebook, which can let you look back a lot further. Uh, and then if we see here on your audience, uh, we can click see all. And uh, once we've done see all, we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and then it will give us our most active times. And Instagram provides a bit of a, uh, a detailed breakdown then so we can switch the days to see what times people are most online uh, on which day. And then also if you, you click on this days here, it will give you an overview of the whole week uh, and then roughly when people are online. So it's a really handy tool there to to get used to doing. Um, and I would, you know, it, it, it is quite interesting, you know, to see, uh, for example, you may think you have a large uh, following of, of male to female, whereas it might be the opposite. So it's really interesting to go into uh, those insights and just just regularly check up on, you know, who you're following is and, and when they're online the most. Uh, the next thing I would say would be the hashtags. So we talked before about creating engaging content. And I think one of the most one of the best ways to get people engaged with your content is unique hashtags. So unique hashtags are simply hashtags that you've made up yourself. Um, so for example, we use one for our recent giveaway at Christmas. We did a Christmas hamper and we used hashtags whenever we posted while cycling Christmas hamper. Um, and generally that uh, get, tends to trend a bit within the, the following of, of your audience. And also people can so people do search hashtags a lot these days, uh, particularly on Instagram. So it's important there to, you know, if you are, say, you're doing a, a virtual club ride, you know, uh, you could do uh, VC Newport VRC virtual club, uh, VCR virtual club ride. Um, and again, it's, you know, it's about getting your audience engaged and, and driving your content forward in the most engaging way. And then the last thing that I would recommend would be to define your goals and plan campaigns. So, you know, it's all it's it's great having all of this advice um, and, and putting stuff out there, which, you know, people might find captivating or engaging. But ultimately, um, I think it's it's most important to to have a goal. So, you know, if your goal is to increase membership in your club, then ultimately your content needs to be driven by that goal. Um, and then also planning, you know, it's it's all good to be spontaneous and say, well, tonight we're going to put out a post on this. But it's it's really useful to plan. So, you know, everything we do here at Wild Cycling uh, from a digital communications perspective, I'll I will plan out. Um, so, you know, whether it's working with our commercial partners or uh, uh, launching a, uh, something internally, I, I will tend to plan that out. Um, just so then you you know stage by stage exactly what you're putting out there and you've justified why you're putting that out there and hopefully then that aligns with your goals uh, and that's it from me um, so if you did have any questions if, if you just remembered if you wanted to send me a logo which had a uh, a background on it for me to make transparent for you to to put on different images then please send that over i'm more than happy to get that back to you um, and dan i don't know if you had any closing remarks or anything yeah, the, the only sort of other bits of advice I'd sort of give you is certainly with your hashtags, um, do a bit of research on the hashtag before you post it. Um, quite a few people have um, quite famously done hashtags and stuff on Twitter. When you read back, it it, it wasn't it didn't quite come out as they, they sort of meant that there, there might be a second meaning for it or there might that hashtag might be used for something else which you might not necessarily want to be associated with. So um, definitely do your research before you uh, you go all out for a, for a hashtag. Um, the other sort of thing to do with, like Lewis sort of said, just try and sort of plan plan things out. Things aren't exactly easy for anyone in terms of planning anything at the moment, but think about how your club would normally sort of operate. So I'm guessing for most clubs in the winter, it's a bit of downtime. There isn't the time to promote stuff. Spring is usually the time when people tend to sort of drag the bike out of the garage for the for the um, for its. Uh, it's summer really and start going out on the bike so having those sort of um having a bit of a plan to maybe sort of tie in with those to to promote your activities that way and membership and and it go take people through a bit of a social media journey if you like to, that leads into something of where you're sort of going to go fingers crossed this year is going to be an olympic year so hopefully we'll be able to um 
uh, have some sort of content that sort of leads into that way or capitalize on people being interested in cycling a little bit more um, from a cycling point of view and commuting and getting out for your daily exercises is probably a good thing to do at this time of year obviously Boris took that advice as well so you know um, make the most of it really uh, and just have a look and see if there's any sort of local trends that are sort of going on. We know that for Newport and Cardiff, there are dedicated hours on Twitter. Uh, so Newport is on a Monday, 8 till 9, Cardiff and Swansea on Wednesdays, 8 till 9, uh, just using the hashtag Cardiff hour, Newport hour, um, Swansea hour. And if you include those into the tags, it, it just gets the message out of that little bit further. Um, and another good account to follow is UK Cycle Chat, which tends to be Tuesdays 8 till 9. So if you've got some content there, um, it, it goes to the wider cycling community then as well. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can either pop them in chat now or if you wanted to sit and have a think, uh, then please feel free to email me. Um, I hope you find uh, these sessions useful. Um, it's been great to see people sending in some stuff and uh, yeah, it's nice to see it come to life and taking taking that advice. That's great. Um, Thanks very much both. Cheers. That's all right. We, we've got a message from Alex. That into, there isn't a Welsh Cycling Chat Hour, so it's UK Cycle Chat. So that's Tuesday 8 till 9. So if you check them on Twitter, UK Cycle Chat. Um, you, you can see the conversations that are going on there and how you can sort of link in with things. Um, there's there, there's a few things to do. Essentially, just have a look at, think about your, your town, your local area, um, and just do a search on social media, hashtag town name and an hour, and just see what comes up. You'll start to see some patterns if there if there is something. I think there is even one for Barry. So there's, you know, there's, there's quite small places with their own sort of social media hours as well. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, Simon's also sort of posted up a, a different sort of program where you can, um, which you can all sort of see, where you can also, you know, sort of vector your own sort of images as well, take the background out. If you, if you do want to have a go at yourself, you can even do it in PowerPoint as we sort of done with the presentations. You can put an image in there, go to the picture settings, and there are a few trans uh, transparency sort of buttons you can press, and that will just draw out. It, it's a it's not particularly neat, but if you wanted something a bit quick, then um, that will definitely work for you as well. All right, brilliant stuff. Um, we will get the notes out to you by the end of this week and, and the link to the video if you want to watch any of this back at all. Like Lewis said, we're, we're around, we're not going anywhere, so um, feel free to drop us any, any questions you might have. Or if there's anything you'd like to find out more about in the future, please do drop us a line and we'll, um, we'll, we can put some more workshops on whilst we're all, all in a bit of lockdown at the moment. The next workshop uh, next week is focusing on Disability Sport Wells, delivered by our colleague Laura. Um, so if you've um, if you've booked on for that one, as most of you have, we'll send out the link to that to you um, on the day. Um, so next Wednesday lunchtime, you'll get the link to that one. Um, but for now, take care, enjoy the rest of the evening, and we'll see you soon. Thanks very much, guys.